All right. I first want to talk about the things that uh, that we've been experiencing this week. Uh, the first thing I'd like to talk about is what we experienced on the way over here. No, <laughs> what did we experience on the... A chip in the windshield. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. We got a chip. We also saw a car that uh, had a bumper sticker that said... Uh, Eat, sleep, sleep, falconry. Falconry. Yeah. And uh, I think that that is... That's something that I've been wanting to get into. Uh, <laughs> maybe not specifically falconry, but I've been wanting a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, you know, autistic people uh, refer to them as like special interests. <laughs> um, but I was thinking that like, I think everyone should have special interests. It obviously doesn't make it as special anymore if your interest is like... <laughs> He's talking about hobbies, Ian. That's just a hobby. <laughs> well, you could... Uh, I don't know, though. Well, what's the difference between a hobby and a special interest? <laughs> special interest is like something that... Like when autistic people have a special interest, it's like all that they can care about. Period. And they obsess over it. Yeah. Oh. So like, you know, that one guy who loves trains. I don't know, though. That's a special, in that's right, a right. special the interest. Yeah. But you could, if you're in like neurotypical spaces, you'd call that a hobby. Just, yeah, because uh, so like when you meet a neurotypical guy and his hobby is woodworking, uh -huh. he sometimes goes into his garage and like whittles a... Mm -hmm wooden airplane or something but if you meet somebody with a special interest who's autistic they'll just tell you every single fact that they know about that thing and they obsessively like research it right. and like like it's their thing is that something though that because it kind of feels like that is something that we're just like kind of that we grow out of or we're pushed out of because i feel like a like uh, my cousin grew up being super into trains and then super into airplanes mm -hmm. and then super into whatever else. And I think he's still into some of that stuff, but it's like... Less. Yeah, maybe less. Yeah. But I think when he was a child, people would throw the label of autism or Asperger's around. Mm -hmm. uh, but now not so much. And it kind of feels like is that maybe a suppression thing you're just like Could be, be interested to the point where it's not weird or interested in things that are more like socially acceptable mm. right like i think a like lot be of less people... interested in the wingspan of the b-52 bomber and more interested in how many civilians it's killed yeah like you just mask better right? yeah like for a lot of autistic people they like mask better but like a hobby is just like something that you do in your spare time because that's how you enjoy mm -hmm. like spending your time. A right. special interest is like. There's this guy on TikTok that I found uh, that his special interest, and he defines it as such because mm -hmm. he's autistic, uh, is Dracula. <laughs> uh, but specifically, he dresses up as Dracula, but it's the specific, a specific Dracula. From like a movie or a book. Yeah, I forget his name or like the actor it's like fucking bernard lagoshi or something oh, like that or mm. bella bella something italian humphrey no not humphrey oh. but uh it's that specific version of dracula okay. that he's crazy about and um i watched this tiktok where he he says like this is how i have fun at starbucks he orders this like venti thing that has a bunch of uh, red syrup in it, which is blood. And then he puts Count Dracula as his name. That's sick. And so when he's at Starbucks, he can say, that's me, when they call out Count Dracula. Yeah. And uh, the comments were so, it's such a mixture of like depressing, but sweet. Mm. One person just said like, I wish I could have fun. Or like, I wish I could have this kind of fun. What? And I'm like, yeah. Because he, he did make it seem, like, pretty effortless. Yeah. Like, he has a special interest, but then he's also, like, pretty, like, unapologetically himself in public, mm -hmm. it seems. Uh, but I will say that he, he, I think, finds a good balance because he, when he was at Starbucks, he wasn't in his Dracula costume. But he still ordered the blood-sucking drink, so... You know, I think that a, is a good balance. Yeah. Yeah. 
And um, it's fun. And everyone in the comments was saying, I, that would make my day as a barista. It would make my day as a bystander. Yeah. <laughs> if we were there, we would be like, that's you gonna so say, That make me my day as a bisexual. <laughs> I'm like, I don't see how that applies. <laughs> <laughs> I I do, but I, I get you wanting a hobby. Yeah. Um, the problem it just is makes it more fun. Every time you get a hobby, you turn it into a video. That's like, so then it becomes right. work. Yeah. You don't have anything that's like yours, uh, and it's weird. I, I don't know. Circling back to like the falconry thing, I feel like I'm getting um, uh, like subliminal. Like I'm getting uh, hypnotized into like liking falconry because this morning, I saw one of those TikToks. The audio was like the. Um, Look at my son, the Hamilton audio. Oh, yeah. Um, and it was a dog that was pointing at a hawk or a falcon. Right. Um, he, because he's a falconry dog. Mm. And he, the caption was like, still to this day, he's, he loves pointing at the falcons. Ah, wait, and so the like, dog is assistive? Assistive in, in the, the falconry. Falconing. And I was like, <laughs> man, that is like next level. Like me and Ian should do that. And then I saw the bumper sticker. Right, right. And I was like, w- I feel like. But how neat is that? I feel like people really need to have more identity like that Mm -hmm. because for me that makes a lot of these like activities like even even just gift giving Mm -hmm. like a whole lot easier because now you know what someone's thing is yeah and it's like you don't even like skip a beat like if you're on vacation and you see like a neat little trinket that's a fucking i guess in this case a falcon or maybe for that guy like a, a vial of dracula's blood or blood for dracula you'd be like Oh, fucking Roger's going to love this shit. I'll you know what it reminds it me of? That Reddit post about the guy who decided to be the camping NPC at work. Yes. Oh. And making friends that way. Mm-hmm. Um, I also, for a while, it was very brief, but you were watching Falconry videos like four years ago, three mm-hmm. years ago. Yeah, yeah. And th- one thing I wanted to share just like with the podcast, because I, I think it's really interesting, is Falconry when they go out to hunt for the first time it's they're letting the falcon choose like whether or not it wants to stay and be a partner right right like when the first time a falcon goes out to fly to hunt the the person who trained the falcon doesn't know if it's going to come back Mm -hmm. and sometimes they don't sometimes the falcon's like fuck you yeah i think it's so cool they like choose whether or not they want to like be your partner in crime yeah a Which true video like, game moment. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was so cool because it really is. like Because I always wondered that, like, how how do you make sure it comes back? Mm-hmm. But you don't. You don't. You just hope that this is the one that likes the, that wants to go on this journey with you. Yeah, it's like real love. Yeah. That's real love. That's real love. <laughs> <laughs> I like the premise when you are mentioning the dog pointing at the falcon. I was like, man, that would be, like, kind of sick to have a squad that, like, all like even though the how the dog can be assistive to the falcon is probably like m- pretty minimal or whatever i think it probably can scare things out of hiding it can probably scare things out of hiding i just like the idea of like a chain of animals oh, yeah. that are all doing a very specified task in the hunt mm. you know what i mean uh i i like that idea i feel like having animals cooperate trained to that extent to cooperate with each other that's really that's the extreme side of Falconry. domesticating oh, animals yeah true <laughs> it's like if farming didn't exist that's right. what we would be specked into right fully yeah it's, like it's not about like them accepting you as their owner they need to cooperate with all of these other like species yeah. they need to decide that everyone is chill. yeah like yeah. snake team up with the dog wrap around its <laughs> leg and you know, hitch a ride <laughs> when you go. You know, do what? Well, it's I'll say it's a poisonous snake. It wraps around the foot of the dog, and the dog go like these pit bulls who hunt yeah. for boars in like Texas. Oh, and it poisons. And it poisons the okay. boar. Yeah, That's or tunneling. Oh to yeah, get in the tunnels. I love tunneling behavior. Yeah, like the minks. Yeah. Mi- oh yeah, the minks and the and the, the dogs. The minks and the dogs yeah. in the water. That's a good Which point. is another thing. You went through a, an era of YouTube watching where it was just like different people trying to kill small animals, trying to conquer wildlife. It was it was specifically the most concerning was 
the rat guy. Uh, Mousetrap Monday. That guy <laughs> really creeped me out. And there was that one video that was so bad yeah. that he couldn't even put it on YouTube. No, there were so many videos of his that, like, we were questioning whether or not this was some, like, snuff. Like, it weird, has like, to be. Uh, it was inhumane. It was stuff. fucked. We had to yeah. stop watching. The first couple, it was, like, it was like humane mouse traps. Uh-huh. That's like why we started right. watching, and then it started getting real mm-hmm. creepy. Very creepy. Um, so then we stopped watching that. I'm not gonna say we. I didn't enjoy that. You were watching that. I was like there. Yeah, you're simply a pedestrian. I was simply a pedestrian in this. But then uh, you moved on to uh, the mink. Yeah, yeah, the mink guy. The mink guy. Something Carter. I don't know. And that was something that you watched for a bit. And then it was falconry. Yeah. And then that kind of, that mm-hmm. era of, like... <laughs> okay, that God. was the, the, this was the topic uh, of special interest that was just meant to ease us into the podcast, okay. ease Sorry. us into the talking. Yeah. No, you didn't need to apologize. <laughs> that was part of my plan. Uh, but I think the most important thing to talk about on our first episode mm-hmm. is uh, with the, I guess, the pros and cons or, like, maybe explaining to the people why we started this podcast. Like, what is the mm. purpose? Just so people get an idea of, like, where our heads are at, um, if they should be expecting more, um, what to expect in the future, that kind of stuff. So what are you hoping to get out of this podcast? Oh, man, I don't know. I, You, you wanted to do the podcast. You've wanted to do a podcast for... Yes. Since I've known you. Mm-hmm. Um, but including me was a new addition. I don't know what I'm looking to get out of it. <laughs> yeah. Just flying by the seat of your pants. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, that's very much your personality. Yeah. And I think that is a good, uh, I guess, like inverse of what, like, what I'm about. Mm. Um, I don't know. For me, I feel like it could be this uh, extra... Um, I don't know, like a supplementary thing to like my videos or the content or the projects that we're doing so that people kind of know and they don't feel like they are out of the loop. Like think like it, I feel like a lot of the things that I've done over the years, including like the apology video that I made for a lot of people that was like, it's so unexpected and like, what the hell? Like, but like, if you knew me as a person, like none of that would be like super surprising no to hear. none of um, your close friends were shocked at all right not even family that doesn't follow you closely yeah online were shocked so i think that's for me that's one of the reasons is it's like oh this is i just need to sometimes dump a little bit mm-hmm. and uh i also like talking um when i feel like it's appropriate um sometimes in like my normal videos i'm like People don't want to fucking hear me talk. They just want to hear me, uh, or they do, but it's like background noise, or they want to see a premise of a video or whatever. And not having that and just being like, all right, I'll dump, I think is like a, that's like a satisfying thing for me. It's It's like a way to categorize. It's interesting because I, it reminds me so much of you saying in your video, like you didn't believe that you're funny or you're worried that you're not funny. And... I think out of all the things that came out of that apology video that weren't related to the actual apology, that's what people hung on to the most. Where like people were shocked that you had these ideas about yourself that seemed to be like the antithesis of who you were online, mm-hmm. right? Like you as an image online come off as like confidently like, you know that you're funny. Like, you know that anything that falls out of your mouth at any time is funny. Um, and it's interesting because you are inherently very funny. Like, I don't think you can turn it off. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about um, the when we were looking for a house, and you made the real estate agent laugh. Like, he looked like he was going to pee his pants. And you weren't even trying to be funny you were like asking yeah. a legitimate question and i remember you were like shocked and confused yeah. but like because I'm you still were shocked by like you you and dane saying uh the, the like accidentally funny yeah. comment i think that's the way you guys phrase yeah it. it's accidentally funny i was like man that's so weird like that 
I don't. I I don't like. Uh, I never thought that that was the case at all. Yeah, I think that's so interesting because that is like what Dane says about you. Like you are, I think you will always be inherently funny, like no matter what you try to do. Um, and I guess I brought that up because you were saying like you don't think people want to hear you talk, but that's like people love your talking, like mm -hmm. your complaints videos and like content cops. Right. Like, I mean... Content cop's kind of hard because we've learned over the years that, like, you can literally just put mean text on a screen <laughs> and, like, get millions of yeah, views. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, like, kind of hard to judge off of that. But your complaints videos, like right. the lottery video, for yeah. example, like, that was a real thought and, and like, feelings that you had. Mm -hmm. And people really enjoyed that video. And that was you just talking. Right. So, like... Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, I... I guess I'm just surprised. I think I just I don't know. It's it's super hard to to know what people are feeling or why they're watching or why they're yeah you know listening. Um, yeah. Uh, and there's just like a lot of overthinking on my part. I think that's for me. That's kind of why this is important for me to do. Is like even just challenging me over these past three weeks to do a video every week has forced me to be like oh shit like I. I can do a video every week. There are sacrifices I have to make. Like I can't, you know, there's a lot of videos that I just can't make in that time frame. Yeah. Uh, unless I have freed up time or something. But uh, this is something that I'm like, oh, this is going to be like really good because this like I think ultimately – can empty my brain because there's a bunch of shit I write down in my phone and I'm like oh perfect video stuff and if I could start like translating some of them into just like a podcast segment or just even a talking point uh that's gonna be a lot better yeah I agree I think you have a lot of opinions and a lot of things that you can and should say but you you write them down and then it's like not topical anymore by the mm -hmm. time because this is like the, like the reason why Ian does not upload more regularly is because Ian is very – like, you are one of the most patient people that I've met, but sometimes it's, like, patient to the point where you, like, won't Oh, yeah, it's move. procrastination sort of shit, like, you know, like, oh, I get to do all this pre-production. Yeah. That's my new technical word for, like – lagging on you, a project. Well, if I put a lot of my time and effort into this research element, the rest of the video is going to be smooth sailing. And then it's like, well, I just like get a boner over researching things. And I'm yeah. like, oh, this is awesome. And then I rabbit hole into something new. Um, oh, speaking of which, mm. the other day I thought about, we were talking, I think when we were doing like that test recording about like um, how I guess I'll have like hobbies or get into things you remember this conversation yeah you and like new USO. things right. and learning about new right and i realized that it's a lot about things and stuff mm -hmm. you know what i mean like you know the 3d printer is an example like oh i love figuring out how it works and modeling things but you do have things like that they're just more focused on like not tertiary things it's more focused on you like super primary mm. cooking yeah fashion yeah fitness health all of that stuff like has like i mean at different times in your life you're gonna be more or less focused but like i think you're way more keyed in to the fitness stuff than i am like you stay on it way more than i do but like and i've been taught the you're language way more serious about it than i am because, like, that was, like, what my schooling... Yeah, like, but it's... I mean, still, it's it's going to be the same thing for me. It's just, like, what yeah. you experienced in, like, in growing up. What was made to be more important yeah. for you. And if you're getting schooled on it, like, you're going to put more value That's into true. it, I think. Yeah. Um, I really but, like the fitness. I, I just think it's cool that we can, like, change our, body. our bodies. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, cool. That's so neat. Yeah. Um, do you want to share with the class how your fiber journey? <laughs> Ian on, on stream just like exclaimed to everybody that my fiber intake has been good. I'm so proud of <laughs> you. The fiber <laughs> journey is so great. Um, yeah, I recently 
started uh, taking more fiber, uh, like in taking it like very seriously. So I'm trying to get like 100% of my fiber intake every day. And it is shocking the difference because I, I was reading that like if you have insulin resistance issues or like troubles like regulati- regulating your blood sugar, it could be a fiber issue because fiber um, has influence over that, which I didn't know. I knew that fiber, like obviously, like when you eat it, it creates like a gel and it makes you feel more full. So I knew that fiber helped you feel more full, but I didn't know that like if you didn't have enough fiber, it can actually cause like mm-hmm. insulin resistance and, issues. And there's uh, different types of fiber, yeah. Yeah, there's there's uh, soluble and insoluble. Right. The, is it pretty pointless for the fiber to be insoluble? No, no, both are important. Okay. Yeah, they both do different functions, but you need both, and you, um, it helps regulate your blood sugar, and that's important because when you have this these issues going on, it causes inflammation and it also causes hunger spikes. So, I was like, either full because I was sick uh, because I ate so much food or I was really, really hungry and there was like mm-hmm. no in between. I was like never yeah. satiated because... Yeah, it's very annoying yeah. to live with that. Because <laughs> I was always thinking about food. Yeah. And I didn't know, which is so crazy, I didn't know how important fiber, like getting your fiber intake is for like helping regulate that mm-hmm. system. Yeah. it's. I mean, I've noticed a big difference. Yeah. I, I think that's why it's cool to bring up is because it yeah you know you even just like not like I don't know the the morning time I always feel like there was always some amount of like clock is ticking I woke up up. with I need to eat I need to eat extreme hunger it was extreme hunger pains and for the past four days I've not had those hunger pains yeah but it was like I felt like I had just because I used to fast for Ramadan and it felt like that every single morning. Like I would wake up and I was like I hadn't because my hormones were all fucked mm-hmm. because I wasn't eating enough fiber. Um, and I just I know I say this all the time, like hormones are so important and like they're powerful and they can do so many things for us and to us, obviously. But like. I, like, didn't take my own advice or think about fiber. Yeah. So. Um, well, I mean, it's a weird, it's not, it's not, like, super, I don't know, like, primary. No. If it feels like uh, just another thing. And I was retaining like, so like people, much water. Well, it feels like the the extent to which people say, like, you need to drink a lot of water. Yeah. Drink more water. It's yeah. It's like, I don't, I'm not going to be able to keep track of, like, how much better my body is doing because of that. Yeah. Um. And it's a bit of a trade-off as well, you know? I can't believe, though. Like, I, my, so this all started. Oh, wait, let me first say. No, you go ahead. I was just going to say, this all started because I got Ian to take a full-body picture of me when we went on a hike. And I was like, what the fuck? Why does it look like I have cankles? And Ian was (laughs) like, you always have cankles. (laughs) And I was like, what? Uh, Yeah, cankle clean. I couldn't. I was so confused. He was like, yeah, that's normal for you. Yeah. And I was like, that's not, that shouldn't be normal. So then I started, like I went to the doctor and I checked my thyroid and I got my blood work done and I had a low vitamin D. So I was like, that must be it. And I started taking vitamin D and it did help. Mm Mm-hmm. With I had extremely low vitamin D, mm-hmm. so that did help like a lot with my energy and some water retention, but it didn't fix the problem fully. So I have been on a journey trying to figure out what the fuck is up with the water retention. And I do have kidney issues, obviously, because of my uh, I almost died of septic shock as a kid um, in my kidney. It was an infection in my kidney, so I only have one that works. So I always thought maybe that was it, but the increasing fiber now the water retention in my ankles is almost completely gone. They, like, look yeah. normal, which yeah. is cool. It's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it, uh, is it something that, like, do you – because I, I know you. Yeah. And I know that sometimes, like, things go well. Like, the vitamin D you mm-hmm. were taking for a while, and it was like, oh, yeah, I feel, like, a, a bit less – depressed maybe it helped with depression a lot yeah um but like you 
like you haven't been taking like multivitamins or vitamin D supplements for a little while. Yeah, a couple months. Um, so do you think it's it might be one of these things where like it feels good in the immediate, but it's like it might no as you get used to it as that becomes like the new normal. It's like all right, like no, I think I need yeah. to keep this up because I mm -hmm. um, chronically I my whole life have yeah, chronically felt been that way. well I've been constipated chronically my whole life. Mm. And the upping the fiber has stopped that issue. Yeah. So I can't stop it because I, I think you need a return to constipation. What the hell? Yeah. Why? Guys, let me just say, <laughs> let me just say this. And I hope you don't get offended. There's been a lot of worse things being said on the internet. Like you shitting your pants? Like me shitting my pants mm. regularly, every day. <laughs> like clockwork. Uh... <laughs> I, I'm just curious in general, you know, it, you know, y'all who have partners in the in the audience, when they rip ass, <laughs> when they rip ass, what is the like response or excuse, right? Because with Anissa lately, there's been a little bit of that, like, you know, like, oh, my tummy aches, I'm feeling sick. <laughs> And, like, I never give that excuse. But when I rip it, ass, it's like, <laughs> yeah, so what? Okay, but Who does your tummy hurt? Problem? No. Okay, well, then it's no, not. No, but. I'm I, not it, lying. You're not lying? No. I, Why does it always <laughs> precede, I mean, precede a fucking an ass rip? <laughs> because I wouldn't be doing it. I hold it in yeah. if, I, if I don't have to do it. Right. But it only happens when I'm feeling sick. Interesting. So I tell well, you, like, I'm sorry, I tried, but it was really right, hard. Right, right. That is respectable. You are very, like, apologetic if it you ever happens. You just rip ass to rip ass. No, sometimes I do apologize, though, <laughs> if it's, like, in the kitchen or something. No, you don't. I do apologize if it's you in the make... kitchen. I'm like, oh, sorry, babe. No, it's like, food. it's like a taunt. It's not a taunt. It's not a taunt. Yes, it is. You always, this is what I'm talking about. You have this problem where you either sound like you're chronically sarcastic or you're just taunting and oh. making fun of. So when you like are like, oh, babe, I'm so sorry. It's a, it feels like it feels you're like taunting taunt. me. Oh. Like you farted and now you're right. emoting <laughs> on me. <laughs> I could totally see how that would come across as a taunt now that I'm thinking about it. Like, oh, sorry, babe, yes. sorry. And that's what oh, you I do. Oh, I didn't mean to. It's fucked up. <laughs> My tummy hurts. So like this... It's not an excuse when I do it. I, I legitimately, there, there are so many times of, mm -hmm. throughout the day that I could be ripping ass. Right, and you don't. And I don't. Yeah, because it's you're an adult. It's a, it's a choice. Yeah. And you're like. In my family, right, none of the women ripped ass. My dad and brothers. That's so fucked up. All the time. Yeah. And if we did, like, like if I thought I was in the privacy of my kitchen without any of my brothers around, right, I would. Mm -hmm. And my brother would fucking come around the corner and he'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> that is so insane. <laughs> That's good. I feel like this is going to be super relatable, even though it shouldn't be. Like, I love that idea of just like, like just a, a woman <laughs> farting is just like the most... <laughs> What like, the hell? It's like <laughs> yeah. detectors go off yeah. and like, yeah, like that was so not like, yeah. but like my dad, you know, so loud. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I, I believe it. That's generally the same, the same <laughs> except, experience that I've had. Except your dad know, would exclaim up. popcorn shrimp while yeah. doing it, yeah, right? Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> you should like always some sort of like weird food association with it <laughs> that just makes the whole thing so much grosser. But you, the reason why I bring that up is because yeah. you do it yeah. now. <laughs> you inherited it from your father. So now when you rip ass, yeah, if like, we're in the car. Asparagus. Do you go popcorn shrimp? <laughs> That's what you do every Green single Green eggs time. and ham. I don't know why you do it. Butter it chicken. Makes it so much worse. Yeah, it does. It's fucked up. Don't do that. <laughs> if you love someone, don't do that. It's not funny, actually. But anyway, that's why Ian's bringing up that he wishes that I'm chronically constipated again because lately I've been having gas issues because when you yeah. up your fiber, and that's, that's what fine. Happens. Yeah, I just want to clarify: there's nothing wrong with gas issues, um, <laughs> Crohn's, colitis, IBS. It's all uh, good, shit in your good pants. In my book, it's all you know, shit, shit under the bridge, shit under your yeah. pants. It's all shit under your 
drawers. Drawers. <laughs> I was going to say drawls. Why are we talking about this? Uh, it's I, worth it. We need a, like, for the first podcast, yeah. I think it's really important to have a yeah. wide swath of, like, topics so that we can see <laughs> what the what the angle people want us to go mm. is. If, you know, maybe guess, if this is a fart. Oh. Fart only podcast. Fart only podcast. <laughs> fart heavy podcast. <laughs> and, I guess that's what I've realized I want to get out of the podcast is just people. Um, Understanding what our dynamic is finally. Oh, that's true. That's, okay, that's yeah. a great point. Because, like, I think people, when we go on other people's podcasts, you just don't like talking. Yeah. So then I talk mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. And then I'm like, like, last yeah, time we it, went on Ethan's podcast, no. I was like, I'm going to talk less. And yeah. I just. And then you ripped it. I ripped ass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's sad. I don't know. I like that's what I personally love about you. And I, th I think a lot of people who who get it, get it. They're like, oh, yeah, that's like that's my dynamic with my partner is like uh, like she or he is the one who like is a lot more like vocal. And like when you know, we, when we first started dating, it's like you I felt really comfortable because you would kind of fill the the dead air. Mm hmm. Uh, and it made me feel like really safe because, you know, you wouldn't like be in your head about it constantly. You would just like fucking blur off whatever the hell you were thinking. <laughs> and it made it so much easier and it made me trust you a lot. That's cool. And it made me feel super comfortable. And that's what I want people to see. Like, it's not complicated, the dynamic. Yeah. Like, I don't, uh, like... You know, that's not my personality, you know. Yeah. I'll put it on for a video or I'll put it on for the podcast. But, like, I think generally speaking, like, when you, me, and Dane are all, like, in the, um, you know, just in the office, it's like, you know, you're definitely the one who's, like, leading or guiding the conversation from topic to topic. Like, this, that, and other thing. So, like, that's just, like, who you are as a person, you yeah. know. And people who meet us. IRL, like, it's very obvious. It's not, like, confusing. They haven't, like, made it out in their head like, yep, Ian is definitely the dominant talkative one. <laughs> He's going to guide us through this conversation. It's like, You no. are intimidatingly quiet, though. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Which, I yeah. think people are like, what's going on in his head? Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, I don't know. Right. I mean... The but first... it, it's been good for our conversations yeah. with other YouTubers yeah. and, or other content creators in general is because they sort of – I think they're given some indication about who I am and what I'm about just through, through like osmosis, like just yeah. through you. It's like, oh, this is like – okay, I get it. Like, yeah. You're sharing things about both of us to people. Yeah. And uh, that goes a long way. That was like the – our first date – when we met, we, like, didn't shut up the whole time. We talked about, like, everything. Yeah. It was really kind of crazy because we talked about Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. Mastiff. We both wanted a Mastiff. Oh, yeah, yeah. You remember dogs. that? Yeah, mm -hmm. Which now we have, we technically have a Mastiff now together. Yeah, big old, big old Queen Fiona. Rottweiler. Queen Fiona. Yeah. Um, we talked about, like, obviously, like, YouTube stuff at the time. Yeah. Um, home ownership. Um, I felt like we... Oh, yeah, we just went through the whole thing. It's like four hours. And my, I, di my dead grandfather. True. We <laughs> I had mistaken what she was saying because I didn't, I, like, I'm a worse listener than Anissa is. So I listened to 90% of what she was saying, but the 10% that I missed was that it was her grandfather who had passed and not her dad. Yeah. And I was like, as she kept going, I was like, uh... <laughs> She's too, like, deep into this conversation that I'm, like, too afraid to ask what it is. So, like, once she was finished, I was like, uh, so what did I say? Something like, so that you're, was you're your like, dad? You were like, you were like, uh, don't, aren't you more sad that your, like, dad died? <laughs> <laughs> That's <is laughs> fucked up, yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh, no, no. <laughs> no, no, it was my grandfather. My grandfather, a little bit rem more removed. It's so my grandfather from, yeah. Yeah. And he had... Alzheimer's for a long time. Yeah. So, um, but the the other thing that happened on that date, which I found very interesting, was when 
you were driving me home, and I had learned from my previous dates to, if you don't state that you're not, you're, like, you're not open to having sex, if you're not, like, blunt about it, you get into, tr like, trouble later on, yeah. right? Like, you just don't want to get in that position. So, like, he was driving me back to my hotel, and I was like, um, what did I say? I said something really uh, aggressively blunt. I think it yes. was, like... If you're looking to have sex, right. I'm not going to have sex with you. <laughs> <laughs> it was something like that for sure. Yeah. And he took that as like me saying like I'm not into Interested you in at you. all. Yeah. And so like he got really quiet. And so the ride home was like so awkward. And then you gave me like a Yeah, it was like the final 5 minutes. It was like the final right? 5 minutes, yeah, yeah cuz I felt like I had to like put it. It was like, okay. Yeah. And then you gave me like a side hug, yeah. like a good old Christian side hug. And then <laughs> yeah. that was it. And both of us walked away thinking that we didn't yeah. like each other. Cuz it petered out. It was yeah. like, ooh, okay, that like kind of <laughs> defeated the flow a little bit. But that was fair and in hindsight, like I'm really glad that that happened because that was like it was great communication. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm learning that, you know, bluntness is not a bad thing. Yeah. Like, you need to, I think it's good for people to become a little bit more resilient to it. Yeah. And sometimes know that it it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with you. Yeah. You know, it's like. Just clear communication. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I can't believe that we survived that, though, mm -hmm. because I was like, I'm not going to message him because mm -hmm. He, I think he fucking yeah. hates me. Um, and you were like, obviously, like, that was horrible. Yeah. Like, she's not into me at all. I didn't feel too bad about it. Really? Yeah. I mean, I felt like as soon as I realized, as soon as I, like, sent the text or whatever mm. and we were communicating again, I realized, like, oh, okay, like, that wasn't, like, a fucking, like, I didn't fuck up. Right. Like, you right. know what I mean? Because that was, like, I think my idea is, like, I just don't want to fuck up. I don't yeah. want to come across as a... A perv. A weirdo or perv or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, you know, maybe I'd question like, oh, did I give indication that I really mm. wanted to fuck or something? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. We'll see. Oh, no. Did she see my boner? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the I'm like casually like stretching out, like looking over. You're wearing uh. really tight jeans. You had these skater jeans, gray skater jeans. Oh, yeah, jeans. yeah. Very skinny jeans. Yeah, yeah. That you used to wear all the time. Yeah. And you were right. at your thinnest at mm -hmm. that time because you had just come back from Australia doing the <laughs> vegetarian thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's funny. Yeah, you were, oh, you were so cute. You were a cute guy. Oh, thank you. Now you're handsome and hot. But at oh. the time, you were you were cute. Cute. Yeah, from cute to handsome and hot. Hey, I'll take that. Yeah. Glow I'm not up. upset about that. I love that. I love being cute. <laughs> what the hell? Don't, that makes it worse. Really? Wait, yeah, because it looks like you're, like, coping. I'm not sad that she said that I'm cute. I no, think that's epic. It, no, because it muddies the water. Oh. I think that's why. Okay. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like in my last video saying some shit like, uh, just like to take the, because um, I think I think that's one of the things that uh, upsets me a little bit now about like some of the like, I guess like uh, hate watchers or like old fans that haven't like moved on mm -hmm. is like thinking that like all of this is like by accident mm -hmm. like my choices are just like oh a series of unfortunate events yeah. and it's like that's not what it is it's like super intentional like yeah. i'm aware of it yeah um but it is fun because i think it uh it you know for for people m making like intention and things like that a little bit more ambiguous mm -hmm. for things that don't matter mm -hmm. right i think is good yeah so something like you know me shitting my pants or whatever <laughs> like that's a great thing to be a bit more ambiguous about yeah um but if i want to make a statement about how you know uh i think it's like very uh like the content i made in the past is bigoted and i need to I do need to be concerned with other people's feelings. It's mm -hmm. like, that's a great thing to not have ambiguity about. Right. So I do like, you know, uh, addressing it in that way. Yeah. It's, it's, it's helpful to me, yeah. at least mentally. I no, think. that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I, I, man, I don't know. I found myself this year, especially really like reminiscing and romanticizing our whole relationship. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's because we have time now, like we're not as busy, 
Yeah, I think so. But I think more time. Yeah, it's I don't crazy know. how much time fucking Creator Clash takes up. It's just so like much time, uh, yeah. I didn't. Th- man, it's so easy. Um, I I remember. I specifically remember it was like PewDiePie or someone Mm -hmm. that when I was like a fledgling YouTuber, I'd be like, man, like I'd be looking at like PewDiePie and several other like creators and be like, you know, they don't know what they're doing because they're not like uploading enough or doing this enough. And it was just like so like um, unaware of like what people's like schedule and time looks like. and, you know, now that I'm living it, it's like, oh, shit, like, you know, even though this event takes place one day out of the year, it's like to do any amount of, like, worthwhile work, you have to dedicate so much time outside of it that people aren't seeing. And it's hard to conceptualize if you're not in it. Like, yeah. well, what the hell would you be spending uh you know, time doing on a daily basis. And it's like, well, number one, just the mental. Like, it's, it occupies a portion of your you know what fucking it's like? brain. It's like when you go into your iPhone, it's like, oh, your iPhone's full. Your storage mm-hmm. is full. And you go in there, and you're like, how can it be full? And there's just this big fucking bar of, like, green that, that you don't know what the hell it is, but apparently it's important. Like, it's right, just there. Right, And you're like, what? Mm. What is this? Why is it taking up so much space? That green, like, big chunk for me is Creator Clash. Right. Like, even though it's, like, not a definitive, like, one thing, it takes up so much mental capacity that you Mm. cannot think about other things. Yeah. Like, I... Even, like, going to get groceries to cook. Mm. Like, I'm walking home and I, I have this, like... like bliss just like washes over my body because I'm like I'm literally I have nothing to worry about yeah Yeah, yeah. my brain is like that idea of not having yeah any like responsibilities to be concerned with it's super freeing and that's where like creativity comes and you did not have that Mm -hmm. space for like the past two and a half years three years yeah I mean even because like the way that things have been moving for the past three years I would say you've had to think about a lot of things that are not creative based. Mm -hmm. So like, it's been really hard for you to like make, like I can see it because there was a time where like, our drives would consist of you being like, (laughs) what if I did this? Or what if I, this is a thing that I'm interested in, blah, blah, blah. And we would like bounce back and forth Uh like ideas for a video and like evolve it. Remember, we would like drive to LA, and in that time, yeah, yeah. that was a great. That was literally the brainstorming. That was the brainstorming session. session, and that happened all the time. That was like yeah. a. I don't know. I like look back on it, and I'm like, I cringe a little bit because I'm like, you know, pretty like, selfish and mm-hmm. just like you know, not really respecting how valuable it is to have a partner who is you know willing to just be a sounding board or like talk to you through things, not even yeah. be a sounding board, be a, an additional writer yeah. in the writing room. And, um, you know, that was, that was great. And you're absolutely right. Like we haven't done any of that over the past like two years. No, uh, two But or three it's starting years. to come back. Yeah. You know, that's what, a lot more. When we were walking the dogs and you started talking about things, I was like, holy shit, Ian, yeah. this is like the first time. Yeah which is like a really good sign. Mm -hmm. Like I'm super happy. I'm super hopeful that like, you know, things will keep rolling. Um, It's just, it's, it's crazy how much it felt like we started to like tumble down. uh, Like we looked at a cliff, right. And we were like, Oh, that's steep, but we can walk down that pretty like safely. Mm -hmm. And then we started, like, picking our feet up and we're, like, going and going. And now we've, like, kind of fallen a little bit. Right. It's just, ha- like, it was way steeper than what we thought. And now we're, like, we're fine. But mm-hmm. it's, like, it definitely was a lot. Yeah. You know, to get to the bottom. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's how I'm feeling the last, like, three years have kind of gone totally. for us. Yeah. And I uh, I guess just piggybacking off the, the analogy that you used <laughs> – is I wanted to bring up uh, just so more people get the dynamic a little bit more. That's another thing that I appreciate you about you is the analogies. Uh, I am not an analogy guy. I've sort of gotten more into them and have figured out it's a great communication tool. It's helpful, um, yeah. I don't think like 
I mean, I'd maybe have an analogy in a video, but it would probably be pretty, like, ham-fisted, kind of shitty. I could see it, me using analogies in, like, Kickstarter crap videos mm. and shit like that. Um, but, yeah, it's super helpful. And you, like, the fact that you come up with a lot of them, like, on the fly, like, kind of amazes me. That's been something that I've been like, I don't get that. And I always ask you, I'm like, did you come up with that? <laughs> it's how my you brain. you hear that somewhere? It's just you know? how my brain functions. It's good. It's, uh, you know who else is really good at that is um, Max. Yeah, Max is great at that. Max is an yeah. analogy king. Yeah. Um, Max is, I do feel like it's really funny because Kat said that too, that me and Max are more similar than not, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of an interesting. Oh, yeah. Like even hearing that from Kat, I was like, well, it's like you kind of ended up dating Max. Max. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, hey, I like that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. Max is great. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Max is And really he's a good, good communicator. Like, he is a very good very communicator. Very good communicator. He's, uh, I don't know if he's quite as blunt as you. I think women in general have a little bit of socializing. You have to be a little bit more blunt. Mm -hmm. You don't really have the privilege of kind of waddling around things and, yeah. you know, avoiding confrontation. Like You do get punished for waddling around things, but you also get punished for being blunt. You kind of oh, just true. have to choose. Yeah. Like, like, literally what just happened, mm -hmm. there was, like, a woman who, like, got hit with a brick for rejecting somebody recently, mm -hmm. um, which is so fucking horrible. Um, so, like... Was I, this that red pillar thing that you were talking no, about? No, the red pillar thing was a 15-year-old girl who got stabbed to death for rejecting um, someone, so... Jesus. Yeah. The... So being blunt, I feel like depending on a woman's experiences, you spec into one or the other. I was a people pleaser growing up and a freezer in, like, bad situations. She's so. a people pleaser and a freezer. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> Sorry, I was distracted. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> I just, I was just like, those rhyme. That's crazy. But as a, as a kid or as a teen, not being blunt got me into situations that I sh wish that I wasn't in. Right. So now as an adult, I've, I've learned being blunt is like, for me, the best strategy. But there, I can see a woman going through being blunt younger and then getting punished for that and then... Doing the opposite. Doing the opposite. Yeah, that makes sense. So I think that women are more on like mm -hmm. one or the other. There's not... Whereas men kind of, right. you know... And in general, I think it's important to note in these instances that um, uh, when we talk about people, I just mm -hmm. want to, like, lay this down early because I think a lot of people actually fuck up with this. Mm -hmm. When we talk about, like, differences between men and women, yeah. it is how they are socialized yeah. differently. Not, like, in, nothing is inherent. It's not inherent genetically, and it's not, like, a, a broad brush, right? Like, obviously, there's, you know, mm -hmm. everything is gray nothing is black and white and yeah we are always when we're talking about the differences between men and women it is socialization observations yeah that's something that i've like i th i would say that's one of the bigger differences that i have or the one of the things i've changed on the most mm -hmm. uh since like uh dating you mm -hmm. is just realizing how like you know how similar we are um you know once you know you fucking discover more about yourself and yeah. you're like you know open up a bit more yeah it uh i would say one of the more like uh important turning points for me was specifically thinking of you because everyone says it but it always remained as like a i don't know what the word is like a cliche or something like that is like throwing a bone uh to the woman, like no, you're no, my best friend. Yeah, yeah, the, you're my best yeah. friend thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, it just never really resonated with me until I was like, wait, no. Like, what would I do with, like, Jordan in this instance? Mm -hmm. Like, a real best friend. Like, how would I interpret his behavior? How would I treat him differently than I'm treating Anissa? And that was huge. It was like, oh, shit, like, this... Like, that ain't a lie. Like, yeah. best friend is a real, like, a good starting point. Yeah. Because, you know, best friends are, like, 
that is, uh, you know, you have their back. You're not constantly, to, like, trying to, like, vie for, uh, like, I don't dominance. know. Dominance. yeah, or any of the sort of the weird um, gender things. Yeah. You know That's what I mean? That's one of the saddest things, I think, about hetero relationships is that a lot of um, – a lot of women, I think, walk into it, at least the women that I know, looking for a partner in the sense of, like, a, like an equal. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, a lot of men have this idea that... I think, honestly, a lot of men do walk into it thinking, like, we are equal, but we are different, and yes. I treat you differently. Separate but equal. Yeah, That's the whole, but like, equal. segregation thing. Yeah, which is, like, I think really sad because it blocks men from the next level of yes. the relationship of love yeah of love yeah. of love which Absolutely. is it's it makes me really sad but you can tell when you meet a couple the men that have mm -hmm. figured it out versus totally. the men who haven't yeah yeah um especially in the youtube world mm -hmm. right like ethan and Ela have obviously figured it out absolutely um and it's like hard to once you start seeing the difference, it's like I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, there could be relationships that are like this because I don't have like a fucking a very good or very strong sample size, right? Mm -hmm. I can only base it off of like my experiences and how I was. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I see like behaviors or kind of way of of being or way of talking about your partner, mm -hmm. and I and I compare that to how I've been in the past. That, like, gives me some amount of indication. Yeah. It's not always the same, and people are, like, discovering themselves and their partner at, like, different rates. Like, maybe someone's figured out, like, you know, one thing first. Um, but I think, like, uh, for me, the really wanting to have, like, separate, like, a separation as far as, like, career and work and mm -hmm. stuff like that goes, mm -hmm. that was, like, really important to me early on. Yeah. And I, I'm not fully understanding of all the reasons why that's the case. I just find it interesting because you would verbalize that, uh -huh. right? That you wanted a right. separation. But then, but then would... you would like not – like you would talk to me about all mm -hmm. these things and like would want help recording things. So that was like I, the most confusing part for me in our relationship was – you would say, like, I want separation. I want you to have your own thing. Mm -hmm. But then, like, you would be like, yeah, help me record this not, thing or yeah. let's talk about how we could yeah. do this. And I would really – I think I was just very diminishing of that work period. Yeah. Like, I, I, I didn't see it as valuable, yeah. you know, uh, just the idea of, you know, human tripod. Right. Right? Yeah. Like, that's – like, that's how I saw it. Yeah. But any, I mean, in fairness, anyone who was fucking holding the camera, I essentially consider it a human tripod in that yeah. case. Um, but, yeah, I, I think over time just realizing, like, how much we had worked on stuff together, mm -hmm. the more it was like, oh, man, this is, like, this isn't, like, standard for a partner to be doing. I think yeah, that's yeah. the way a lot of, uh, I shouldn't say a lot, but. Uh, some people can think about it mm -hmm. is like, well, they love me. This should come standard. Yeah. You know, is this like helping me out whenever I ask for it type shit? It's like uh, you're here. So why wouldn't you? So why wouldn't you? Well, what are you doing in the meantime? Yeah. That type of shit. You yeah. Know? Well, you're not cooking dinner. Well, at least be doing this. Yeah. Uh, I think it's that mentality generally. But yeah, I don't know. It's been a huge relief for me. Mm -hmm. Uh to you know be working with you mm -hmm. on like all the projects that we've worked on literally couldn't fathom doing creator clash without you God. couldn't fathom doing this without you yeah um and it just feels so uh right and oh that was another thing i was always worried that it would start a fight. Yes, that I remember the, you were worried about fighting. Yes, that and I, when I see that on like 90 Day Fiance yeah. and all these other like just random dudes mostly mm. sort of communicating that where it's like, oh, I don't want to do that because then we're just going to fight. Then, yeah. then, then we'll have the, the fights that we have outside of that 
um, we'll get in our day to day. We'll, we'll be fighting at work together, yeah. and then how will we get any work done? Yeah, and it's like. I don't know, like, you're going to be fighting regardless, you know, if, if you're fighting, if that's a regular thing, we're fighting, like, basically not at all compare how, how we used to. I can't believe how much we don't fight, especially yeah. with Creator Clash and, like, everything that goes on. We fight once, like, every three months. I feel like that's not mm -hmm. even an exaggeration, which is, like, insane because... Yeah. I mean, relationships are, you know, stages, right? There's, like, different times where, like, different things are happening. And just because you're fighting now doesn't mean that, you know, you're going to be fighting in the future. Just because you aren't fighting now doesn't yeah. mean, you know, but... Stage, it's a period. It's a period, you know, and depending on... it depends on, on where each person's at. Yeah. And we, when we started Creator Clash, I was like, okay, fuck. If we're going to fight, it's going to be now. Uh -huh. And we never... Yeah. We, it was like we didn't even have... It time. was great though, because it was it was like that start where I was starting to like understand certain things, yeah, and like where you wanted to be, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there was a point like before I couldn't imagine working with you. Then it was like, okay, well, we're going to work on this thing together, and you're going to fight in it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So there was a lot of things that I came to accept where I'm just like, well, this is Anissa's personality. Like, why would I try to like fight it? Fight that, and you it's know also, what I mean? It's so interesting. It's I mean, I, it's good that we're bringing this up on the first episode, I guess, because, like, for me, I didn't even, like, want, and still to this day, like, feel uncomfortable taking any credit for any of the stuff that we've done, including Creator Clash, mm -hmm. because it has been so ingrained in my brain through our relationship right. that... It's not my business. It's not something I should be inserting myself in. I just, but I enjoy helping you and seeing you happy. Mm -hmm. So I've always had this like push and pull in my brain of like, okay, well, he needs help or he's asking for help or he's asking for input on this. But at the same time, like, you I'm like, I ruin everything. Know. I don't want to touch it. Right. And you also just don't know, I don't know to like, what extent you should be yeah. helping yeah. or talking about it yeah. or any of these things. So it's like, well, you know, at, at, in, in one moment, you could be like, well, no, like, uh, or maybe after watching a TikTok that's like, you deserve better or something like that. <laughs> it could be like, no, like, I do deserve better. I'm like putting a lot into this relationship mm. and I do deserve some credit because I'm like involved in this man's life mm. for the past fucking eight years. Like, you know, I should, you know, be but recognized. Because my brain, here's the thing though. My brain, when things are going well for you, I'm like, that's, all him. Right. He's doing amazing. He's and doing so good. And when it goes bad. And when it goes bad, I'm like, it, it's because I had any involvement in mm. this at all. Yeah. I fucked it all up. I don't know what's good. I don't know what's funny. Mm. I shouldn't have even yeah. answered the questions that were asked. Totally. And so, like, it's this horrible, like, and, and part of it is, like, for a long time, it's true. Like, it's ironic because I had a ton of involvement in a lot of videos like the taco one the oh, albertos the, burrito. yeah, the burrito California one burritos the like the tana content cop the rice gum content cop um the what was there were other yeah there are plenty of other videos just literally random ones like pokemon go like yeah. you can like look through them and be like okay that yeah. one that one that one but all the save the, or a lot of the save the squirrels initiatives. A lot of the save the squirrels, but like there at that time when I was like so heavily involved, I was more involved in your videos back then than I am mm -hmm. for the past three years. Yeah, I like totally pulled back because I was like, I don't fucking, so, I I'm I don't want to ruin anything. But I, at the time, that was when you were the most like, don't work with me, uh -huh. which is I it was yeah, just yeah. ironic that flip is crazy. I was doing a lot, but it was like, mm -hmm. I don't know where. Yeah. So, like, even now, like, online, like, that's definitely, like, my, like, sore spot or insecurity is, like, how much of your career did I honestly fuck up? And when was it, when did it start going bad? And 
how can I fix it? Yeah. That, to me, is incredibly sad, and I feel really terrible that you feel that way, and I feel even worse that, like, you know, there are these chunks of people on the internet that like to push that narrative. Because for me, I see it as the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I literally feel like fucking saved. Like you pulled me out of my fucking, like, I mean, in some ways it's a fucking like death spiral. Yeah. Um, You know, it's like you, it's very easy to make the type of content I was making, like really toxic, edgy stuff. And it, it kind of locks you into it, right? Because like, to be honest, I, I feel like it's it's way worse to upset that fan base and say that like, hey, I, I even just saying like, hey, I have some standards of, you know, how it's called edginess for a reason, right? Mm-hmm. You're on the like precipice of saying things that are acceptable, mm-hmm. um, and uh, just saying like, yeah, I, I think I'm I'm maybe too far on the side of edgy guys, like that that's too much for a lot of them, and it I I think in fairness it makes them reflect a little bit about their own lives and themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't feel like that. I feel like you have been a great partner in not like, I don't feel in any way that you have like inserted yourself and people can tell, you know, based on the content. A lot of people just, I think, who are fans like have a vague idea of you through like maybe social media me casually mentioning you in a video maybe Mm -hmm. just saying your name it's not like i've even made a a a video about you or anything like that so it's it's a little bit upsetting it's not a little bit upsetting it's very upsetting to see um the reaction to you and like blaming you for things because i just i never fucking i would have never boxed if not for you and i'm so glad that i did it is such a like a like for because you gave me that like comfort that I don't have from my family mm-hmm. to say everything's gonna be okay. Yeah. Uh, that I don't you know even have for my friends that and uh, you know no no shade to any friends but you know they're not that involved they're not to the point I'm an adult. They have right? lives. They have lives. Yeah. But you're someone who I can absolutely fucking rely on, and you know. For people to say the nasty shit they've been saying, it's like it's it's incredibly hurtful. But yeah, I mean, it's it's countless like the things that you have helped me do that I. It doesn't matter if the internet thinks that it's made my life better because for them it's like, well, your views aren't <laughs> your views are down, so it's gotten worse. But it's like, you know, they're ignoring the fact that the views were going up. While yeah. you were in my life, right? Yeah. 2016 or 17 onward. 2016. Uh, you know, the we were together and yeah. my life was, you know, being improved view-wise. So I don't know. It, it sort of depends on what your metric is. But I don't think that's a great metric for measuring, you know, how happy, I guess, happy or fulfilling your life is. Well, like... Uh- you have a bed frame now. I have a bed frame. I didn't have a bed frame. I, I woke up at 3 p.m. every day. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have a routine. I was yeah. six foot one, 140 40 pounds. pounds. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're allowed to be six foot one, 140 pounds, but it's not necessarily for the you. It wasn't weight. healthy for you. It wasn't me. For yeah. you, it wasn't healthy. Yeah. The I mean the crazy and just having routine. Yeah. Simple things. Yeah. I watched this fucking. It's so crazy. I I'll see this guy on um, TikTok. He cuts hair. He's a barber. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he, this TikTok, he was cutting this like nerd guy's hair, and this nerd guy, basically said like. The, the guy asked him, like, what kind of cut you looking for? And the guy said, like, oh, I, I kind of like your haircut. Maybe do something like that. And it's like, oh, man, this guy doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. He's, like, just count, like, waiting to fucking get out of that barber's chair. Mm-hmm. He's just doing it because he was told that you got to fucking look presentable. Yeah. You know, you got to do this. And then um, and the guy was asking about, like, routine. And then the, the guy was like, Oh, no, I just kind of let my hair grow out uh, sometimes for, you know, many months. And then, uh, you know, I have to get it cut. And the barber was like, look, dude, you got to get into a fucking routine. 
because then you don't even have like an actual hairstyle or haircut if you just let it go for four months. It becomes like nothing. Mm -hmm. And it's so incredibly relatable. Like that like that like primary thought of like I don't want to like deal with X, Y, and Z. I don't want to deal with, you know, having a schedule. I don't want to deal with having to cut my hair, having to even think about the clothes that I'm wearing. I want to do all the things that like reduce the amount of like stress in my brain. And yeah. that's exactly what I was about, you know, before I met you. I mean, even as we were dating the first few years. Yeah. Uh, some of those things have yeah, gotten better. Yeah. You know, but I would definitely prioritize things that – uh, do not necessarily improve my life, but make me feel as though there's uh, free time on the calendar. Yes. Kind of. you Your diet was so interesting. It used to be, oh, um, yeah. be uh, refried beans, canned mm. refried beans. I uh, love them. Just bitches. a cold tortilla and some cheese. Oh, yeah. No, not a cold tortilla. Well, you'd warm I it up in the, the microwave. Yeah. But, like, you wouldn't toast it or anything. I mean, I would toast it if we had, like, a gas range or something. Yeah, I'd but you didn't. put that puppy on there. You didn't. No, I didn't. I and, didn't. like, you would just kind of crawl out of your room. You would, so. Bean burrito. That's a bean burrito. It's a bean burrito. Cooking. <laughs> he used to, so, our schedule when we first started dating, when we were living on a house on a hill away from everyone, very isolating time in our lives, to be honest. But um, I would go to bed at 11 o'clock and wake up at 7, and I would stream and kind of, like, do whatever. Ian would go to bed at 4 a.m. and wake up at, like, 4 p.m., mm -hmm. would sleep 12 hours. And then you would wake up, and you wouldn't even want breakfast. Yeah. I'd be like, do you want to do something? Because I had been up from 7 to whatever, 4. Yeah, your day, you're halfway through your day. It was almost done. Yeah. Pretty, like, I was winding down. I was like, you want to do something? And you're like, no, I got to, like, do work but then you would go on your computer and play hearthstone and then at around like 9 10 after we eat dinner you'd be like oh shit i gotta work um so then you would work until yeah um and that was kind of your that was a cycle existence you would eat once a day usually when we had dinner mm -hmm. um and we were sleeping on a mattress on the floor like when you had the most views mm -hmm. You were arguably, like, the unhappiest, like, I have ever mm -hmm. seen you. Totally. Basically. Yeah. Well, and it's hard to have the the sight, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, it's hard to know exactly what it means, mm -hmm. right? Because me then, I'd be like, no, I'm loving life, <laughs> you know? But it's like, I'm the same, essentially the same person. Yeah. Fast forward in time, and I'm looking back, and I'm like... No, I I wasn't yeah. happy. I didn't have it figured out. Uh, you know, it, my life was not fulfilling. Yeah. Um, well, you weren't you, know. you you weren't working out. You didn't have a dog that you loved. You love Fiona so much, and in the the schedule that you used to have, there's no way. Well, uh, yeah, and also I think a, an important point in all of this is realizing what can be done in a day. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, that being scared of, like, you know, having, like, a busy or full schedule mm -hmm. is, like, I mean, that's a, that was a bad thing. I thought, like, you know, that I wouldn't be able to do half the things that I'm doing now. But it's, like, yeah, you can wake up, eat breakfast, brush your teeth, eat breakfast, go to the gym. Yeah. Uh, you know, stream. return home, eat, stream, uh, edit shop. a video, edit thrift a video. shop, eat yeah. dinner. Cause when that would not like my the, my fullest day was literally like, you know, filming for a couple hours, uh, eating lunch, yeah. playing games. It's yeah. like what? Well, remember there was a time where the only thing we could do was go to Jack in the Box because mm -hmm. it was the only thing that was open when yeah, you when were I was awake. awake. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. It's crazy memories, man. And it's and, and Sonic. It's, Sonic. Yes, yeah, Sonic. That stayed open pretty late. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's one of those things I try to like tell, I guess, other couples and other people mm -hmm. who, who are like going through it is like, yes, yeah, some of these moments, like 
it's weird, but like <laughs> you might look back fondly totally on some of these moments. Yeah. And things could be a lot worse. Yeah. Like, it's crazy how many how many like bad moments from the past I'm like, oh yeah, like could be a lot worse. Like yeah. I I'm envious of the you know the the bad things that I had to experience in the past. I'm so fond of like I have this one memory of you had just picked me up from the airport and you took me back to we used to live in Vista, which is like kind of near um San Diego. Uh -huh. Um so you took me back to your house, but it was really late at night. And the, well, not really late, but it was like 11. And the only place open was Jack in the Box. And I was so tired and disoriented. And uh, we went to go order. And the lady was like, we're resetting all of the machines. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? I do, yeah. And I was so fucking hungry. Uh -huh. And you had nothing in your house. Yeah. And this house, like... There was no insulation yeah, was or, like, poor bare. insulation, bare, no furniture at all except for the, the mattress on the floor and the wall heaters. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm not going back to that right now. Like, I, I need to eat. So we just sat in the car and waited. And I have, like, this really fond, like, rose-colored glasses memory of, like, right. this experience. Like, it sucked, mm -hmm. but it's like, yeah, I don't know. It's... It's cool though. I mean, it's 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 reassuring to know is like, as bad as it feels in the moment, I yeah. know that I'm going to get to the point where I look back at this. I'm like, oh man, remember when we? Uh, <laughs> it, it might either be like, oh, remember when we tried to start that podcast, yeah. or it could be like, remember when we started the podcast? Yeah. Um, and it's it's cool. It you know, it ends up you know working out at least as far as your memory goes. Well, my other favorite trauma memory. Um, was um, when the OnlyFans stuff was happening. Yeah, that was, for me, that is so, like, special. Yeah, to same. Think back, uh, back at that. It's like, so weird, though, because it was after, like, everybody was making videos uh -huh. and uh, COVID, yeah. obviously, and we couldn't do anything. Everything was shut down, even, like, walking trails. Yeah, yeah, hiking trails. And we took Blitz and we just walked angrily around the, the we went to that one place that like wasn't shut down yet and it was just this weird like not oh even yeah really kind of trail open area yeah open area what you're talking about and we just like anger walked around it uh, for like four hours because yeah. we, we had nothing to Trying do to, yeah get it out and that was actually also when blitz got diagnosed with um IVDD, IVDD or whatever, which is the disc issue, which we only found out because we had walked so much, with, so much with him that like his back. So this whole thing was happening. There were people making videos talking about us. COVID was going on, and my fucking dog yeah. was not drinking water. He like literally his neck would yeah. not. He didn't want to go down at all. I remember, yeah. And I was crying, and I was like, the world is fucking ending. <sighs> we like went to the vet and shit. But like when I look back on that memory, even though it was like incredibly shit, literally everything about that yeah. is incredibly shitty. I'm like, man, we did that together. Yeah. You yeah. Know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Like. So I guess that's something to say to people. Like, if you're going through it and mm -hmm. you feel like everything is shit, yeah. one day you will look back on it and be like, mm -hmm. man, I was going through it. Well, you know what's, what's interesting is I get comments like that sometimes mm -hmm. where people say like, oh, I had a fucking ruptured spleen or something and your videos got me through this mm -hmm. time in the hospital. I'm like, oh, man, like... Now I'm, like, actually kind of putting two and two together a little bit. Mm -hmm. Where, like, I never really related to that because I've – I haven't – in fairness, I haven't had too many, like, life-threatening, like, uh, injuries or, you know, been, like, I guess super alone in that way, mm -hmm. um, particularly in, you know, the hospital. And uh, so I, it never really – it always, in some ways, again, felt like a cliché. Mm -hmm. You know, like, oh, you're ju you're just saying that. Like, I did, I, the video didn't really he help you. Like, it passed the time. But if you don't have a partner, uh, or that was is like a great distraction. Like, you know, in the same way that we're fondly looking at, at these, looking totally. back at these horrible moments. Yeah, that would actually be a fucking awesome moment to look back at and be like, oh well, at least I fucking, 
because that ends up being the association. Like maybe you had a specific food you were looking forward to, to eat, like a fast food mm -hmm. and a specific content creator to watch. It's your comfort. Yeah. It's like a Hunter Hunter yeah. during, during uh, OnlyFans. Yep. The OnlyFans oh, era. OnlyFans Hunter Hunter. Yeah. I love it. It hits differently. Yeah, it does. We, when everybody was like shitting their pants on social media, we like deleted our apps. Uh -huh. And that was actually, we also, we had just moved into our new home. Mm hmm we had to repaint all the walls because mm -hmm. we were terrified of getting doxxed again. Yeah. Um, and so when all that drama was going on, we were, like, repainting the walls, trying to distract ourselves. And we're like, this isn't working. So we just, like, deleted our apps and lied in bed for literally a week and mm -hmm. binge watched all of Hunter Hunter. It was so good. Yeah. It's so good. I, it, it, I feel like all the bad things that were happening online or all the, you know, the shitty uh, – you know, anger takes that mm -hmm. people had, like it almost made it that much more special. Yeah. To you know, it's, go away from it and binge watch. It's like yeah, the rain and the thunder and the lightning outside, yes. where it's like, oh, it makes my home feel so, so much cozy. better. They were like yeah. the ecstasy that that made everything more heightened. Right. So right. so thank you if you left a hate comment at that time because you made Hunter Hunter even more special. Yeah. So, we need to harness that for like. You know, now, <laughs> yeah, you know, true. we should have done a little bit more of that preparation for Creator Clash and stuff. I know. Um, uh, what are we at time-wise, Dane? Hour 15. Oh, Hour my 15. God. That's pretty good for a first-timer. Yeah. Pretty good for a first-timer. Uh, how's it feeling to you? Feels good. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Feels good. Yeah. <laughs> Is yeah. Um, no, I've just been. I, sorry, I've just been listening. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. No, that's good. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Um, let me see if I have uh, another topic to jump on to. Oh, I will say that if people like this podcast and stuff, um, we do want to like have like some extra time that isn't going to be broadcasted on the YouTube channel. Like, save it for Patreon. Mm. And put that's a great point. Put it on the Patreon. So if you like this and you want even more, that like we're not going to put on the YouTube video. That's the that's, place to get it. That's where we're gonna yeah do that. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's a maximum damage Patreon. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I was gonna. Oh, that's also something I want to address to some extent. Also, this is the first episode. We will have watched it and sort of got an idea of maybe what we like or don't like about it mm -hmm. but you know to to some extent <laughs> we welcome uh comments um you know saying what you what you liked about it maybe what resonated because you know we you know i don't i don't want fucking non-stop feedback because we just kind of want to get in the grind the flow and just record every week or however often we're going to do it mm -hmm. um but we do want to get it off on the right foot so uh, you know, comments are welcomed. Yeah. Um, okay, so the next topic I wanted to talk about was men. <laughs> M-E-N. Mm -hmm. What is something that men can be? <laughs> a little bit of a riddle. What is something men can be? Yeah. I don't want to make this fucking enough. weird. <laughs> oh, enough. True. <laughs> no, I was going to say... Uh, um, I watch mothers. Men can be mothers too. Is that correct? Am I right? No. Oh, fuck. Uh, there was this TikToker who was talking about like she has a whole th series on like men being creepy, like creepiness, oh. <laughs> and like how to avoid being creepy. Okay, that's epic. Yeah. I feel like that people need to stop watching Andrew Tate and start watching that. Yeah, actually, yeah. though. No, that's epic. Well, it's one of these things where I keep telling myself like. Holy fuck, these men would just, like, do a lot better in the dating world mm -hmm. if they just started being more like women. Yeah. But I think a lot of men hear that, and what they say is, oh. Real so women don't like that. No. Oh, yeah, there's that. <laughs> but then there's also, like, the image that they put in their head, much like all these other cliches, is, so you want me to cross-dress. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, that's what they have in their head. I know that sounds so dumb. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But that is the 
vision that I think a lot of them have, mm. and they just kind of quickly dismiss it, mm. right? Where it's like, well, what does it mean to be a Also, a here's woman? the thing. This is just something I've just come to accept. Anything feminine is seen as less than. Yes, yes. Period. Absolutely. So you hear, like, be more like women, and men are like, ugh! Right. But not even men. Women, too. Uh-huh. There's a lot of, like, like internally yeah. self-hating women that, like, hear, like, men need to be more like women. And they're also like, Ugh! Mm-hmm. because they're like, I am less than. Right. And if the man that I'm dating is doing that, they are also less than. Yeah. So, like, I I do think that there's just this inherent, like, as soon as you hear something like that, your brain's like, but Yep. So. Yeah, that's what I was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, back to the creepiness factor, mm. what men can learn. Uh, well, I this woman gave a, a pretty decent analogy. I think it's like compared to, comparable to some of your analogies. Mm. Not quite as good, oh. but it's a good one. Uh, the, these analogies, by the way, I don't know. Maybe we should create a book or oh. something, like a coffee table book maybe. It doesn't have to be that serious. And he says analogies. Oh, abroad. <laughs> what? An analogy for every country. No, that's stupid. Uh, (laughs) But I think these analogies are so helpful in just kind of arriving at a certain place or to to just change perspective a little bit. Yeah. She said uh, men understand creepiness that uh, women potentially feel from you or men in general Mm -hmm. uh, is the same sort of creepiness that you would feel when you're in the bathroom pissing at a urinal. And there's a whole row of urinals yes. lined up. Yeah, yeah. You know where I'm going with yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, yep. And they go right beside you. And the a, a man walks in and goes right beside you. Yeah. Because there's this um, idea that in your head automatically is like, why the fuck is this person right next to me? There's like undertones. You can't prove it, mm-hmm. but there's undertones of like sexuality and there's undertones of, like, why did this person, what is the intention, what's happening here? There's always intention, of like, 90% of human language is body. In, right. Right? Mm-hmm. So, like, if you're doing something like that, it's hard to not read into it. Yeah. Right? So, like, and also, like, and you've seen it at this point because we've been together for so long. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, like, bro will just come up to you and, like, you can't afford to be like, oh, he's just he's just doing his own thing mm-hmm. and he doesn't even know I'm here. Because the one time that you assume that and that's not the case, mm-hmm. you're just fucked, yeah. right? Like um, Candy Corn was like a great example <laughs> yeah, of that. Yeah. We were walking in downtown Vista playing Pokemon Go. Yep. And there was a dude that was like quite a ways away from us who was like coming towards us. And I was like, no. We yeah. have to go. We were there together. Yeah, we were together. And I was wearing um, a pink, well, not pink the color, but like a the Victoria's brand. Secret pink. And it was like orange, white, and yellow, yellow or whatever. Uh-huh. So like candy corn colors. And I'm like, we got to go. And Ian's like, what? So I like started speed walking and I noticed Ian wasn't coming. And I started hearing candy corn. Candy corn. <laughs> so creepy, and it was dude. so <laughs> creepy. And, and so I like, hurry back to Ian. I'm like, Ian, I'm like, he's talking to me. We need to go. And Ian's like, what? And then like looks over and looks at this guy who's like clearly like fucking just like in his creeping own down world, the creeping street. down the street, like yeah. coming at me. And Ian connected. Candy he's like, candy corn. corn. And he's like, Come candy corn. Is <laughs> play. It was so scary. And Ian's like, oh shit. We yeah. <laughs> but like for you, because you don't, you're not in that yeah. realm. You, you don't have to be like, oh, okay, well, we'll see what happens. Right. Like, with me, it's like— I've never been called candy corn. No, you've never been—yeah. Yeah, like, it was yeah. so—that one, and then there was the guy who spat, who was spitting, because mm-hmm. he was mad that I wouldn't talk to him. Yeah. Um, well, and again, that was one of those instances where the guy had no interest in me. No. He I was like I was invisible yeah. to this person. Yeah. Uh, but you were not invisible to him. No. And I think that's sort of the thing that, you know, some guys would benefit to uh, learn about because it's not like you're, f- you know, inherently your fault that you don't know that 
you know. No, of course not. You don't have that experience. This is happening. Yeah. Yeah, you, you judge every situation based on how you've been treated generally, and you're generally ignored. Yes. Which... It sounds amazing to the majority of women. Yeah. They're like, what? <laughs> yeah, be ignored? Yeah, to be That's miserable. fucking cool. You don't get that privilege as a woman until you turn like 40. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, you know, it's all fine and well. Uh, if you're, you know, a guy who would prefer to not be ignored, mm-hmm. you know, because that hasn't been your experience. Yeah. You've been ignored. So it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Women must like this too. <laughs> You know? Yeah, no, it's, and it's, that's its own problem, right? Like, men being ignored largely in society and not, like, being valued as, like, uh, or felt. This is where, like, we kind of, like, come to a, uh, a problem. Men, it is sad that men are viewed as unsafe people, right? It's lonely and alienating uh-huh. for men. But that is not women's problem to fix, is, like, where that conversation kind of ends. Because you'll right. hear some, like, men's rights activists and people be like, mm-hmm. but I I don't want to be ignored, and, and I live a sad and lonely life. And it's like, I'm not going to take that from you. There's a lot of very lonely men out there, and I, that, that's incredibly sad. But women are not who you should be mad at for, mm-hmm. like, that whole scenario. Because women have men calling them candy corn in the middle right. of the night. Yeah. So, like... Well, and how many times are you going to roll that dice? Yeah. There's a lot of women who have rolled that dice a number of times. Yeah. And then it gets to the point where it's like, now I... They're dead. I've got... Yeah. It's, they're they're, they're dead. dead. They've had a number of traumatic experiences. Yeah. So now it's like, yeah, no, I'm going to... Fuck it. I'm just going to be single. I'm not even going yeah. to attempt. Or, like, any man not attempt. that looks at me, I'm going to treat them like they're scary and like you have to like understand where that's coming from and the way to fix it is to listen to women like the women the woman that you're talking about Mm -hmm. who's teaching men to be less creepy you have to admit to yourself that there are enough men out there that are doing creepy things that you just you can come off as creepy even if it's not the intention and you have to learn how to lead showing that you're a safe person yeah right like it's like um you would never walk briskly behind a woman, ever. No. Right? Because no. you're aware of, like, what that... Yeah. Right. There are some men that, like, literally don't... They don't right. even think about it. I'm not even a threat. Yeah. yeah. What the hell? What's yeah. her problem? I know I'm safe, so therefore she should know I'm safe. Yeah. Yeah. So... It's like, that's... That's... Yeah. The way you fix the it... the talking point, basically. Is, yeah. Stop, like, learning from people like that woman who's teaching you to be less creepy. Yeah. And there's a lot, I think that's the thing that is perhaps discouraging is I think some people, again, hear this stuff Mm -hmm. and they think it is a cliche to, uh, like, they, they, they almost think that you need to, like, adopt, like, feminist rhetoric Mm -hmm. or shit like that for this to be displayed. Like, well, if I start, like, speaking like a feminist, then... Maybe I'll get laid. No, or something it's like even that. creepier. Yeah. There's a dude uh, recently on Book TikTok. I'm on Book TikTok who he has this book called like something e girl, understanding e girls, or some weird shit like that, where mm-hmm. it's like, I realized I had a porn problem and now I realize that women are people, so I wrote a book about it. And he's trying to get on the New York bestseller list or bestseller, whatever the hell, yeah. um, by reading or reviewing books written by women because he's now realized, he's claiming he's realized that women are people. But that is like a massive red flag, right? Mm-hmm. When you're broadcasting like, I now realize that women can be people too and now I'm going to use them to platform myself to be likable. Like these guys that are like trying to infiltrate through yeah. feminist speak and yeah, be yeah. like an ally are like, that's becoming a trope that women are now like yeah, yeah. aware of. You can't yeah. like dishonestly no. enter that space. No, no, anymore. it's it's, it's going to be very apparent. Yeah. Yeah. I, I saw a TikTok actually. This guy was like um, doing like a parody of like when, when fucking like toxic uh, partners 
uh, like try to use therapy speak to like get what they want. Yeah. And it was really funny because he's using all these different things like the term gaslighting mm. and boundaries and, and all triggering this sort of stuff. And, yeah. yeah. Like it's very triggering to me when you don't clean the dishes, babe. <laughs> like that type of shit. Yeah. It's invading it's my like, boundaries. Yeah, you don't. You're not going to be able to get away with that. Yeah. Like, it's cute. Like, you might get a chuckle yeah. out of your depressed partner, yeah. but um, it it doesn't work. Yeah, it's not. Like, you have to put in an actual effort. Yeah. The um, Jonah Hill. Yeah. It's like, you, you can't be a Jonah Hill. Mm-hmm. Uh, what were we talking about? The creepiness. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a good analogy to help... Uh, men like kind of put that together a little bit. Yeah, the and, urinal analogy. Yeah, I don't. I, I, you know, I do. I do feel bad for men who don't know where to start because it's not satisfying. It's not like, um, uh, it's not like, like a lot of the times I, uh, when you're in trouble and you're feeling bad emotionally. Mm-hmm. What you need is to feel supported and comforted and that sort of stuff. My instinct early on was, like, the exact opposite, basically. And, you know, like, what's the problem? How am I going to fix this? How do I get you to shut up, essentially? <laughs> like, yeah. And I think a lot of dudes can, like, go into their, like, even, like, finding a partner mm-hmm. in that same sort of mentality where it's, like, you're, there's no, like, one problem to fix like, you need to change, like, your fucking, how you operate in the world. You're like, outlook. And these, yeah, these little subtle things are be, going to be the things that people cue into. Yeah. Not just women. Yeah. You know, everyone. Yeah. Uh, the people who are fucking sentient are going to see that. Yeah. Or maybe they won't. And if they don't see it, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine if they don't see it. You got to fucking live your life. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you're not going to... I think trick anyone. The yeah, yes, you you can't it's obvious to people who know, mm-hmm. right? And like I guess on the flip side of that or the more positive view of that is like for people who don't know where to start um men especially um all you have to do is change your outlook like you were saying and everything else kind of just falls into place. Like you do a lot of things differently. But you didn't, like, actively think about doing things differently. Mm-hmm. It's just your views on mm-hmm. people yeah. and women and the world, like, shifted. Yeah. And then everything else just kind of mm-hmm. started being different. I, I do think it helps to do that exercise, like, kind of as often as possible mm-hmm. to, like, in these situations to be like, okay, wh- how would my experience be different if I was a woman right now? Yes. And be yeah. genuine. And don't, because yeah. like, it's so hard, it's so easy to be like, oh, yeah, nothing would be different. <laughs> I'd be hot. I have a pussy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I would just go get laid right now. What the hell? Like, that's why women have it easy. <laughs> the fuck? Like, women could fuck whoever they want to at any moment's notice. I can't do that, though. So, of course, they have it easier. Yeah. Um, but, like, yeah. be honest with, like, what would this be like? Right. And Small things. Like, the example you gave of, like, uh, walking behind someone, mm-hmm. it's like, that's uncomfortable, mm-hmm. you know? That's, like, like, and even some part of your fucking man brain should also feel, like, mm-hmm. it's, I feel uncomfortable knowing there's a presence behind me mm-hmm. and not being aware of like what, who exactly it is who it is and what their intention is yeah. or whatever i think also like women's experiences like you have to be honest with yourself on like as a whole like i this is something i used to say to ian all the time like imagine you were put in a free for all jail where you were at least 45 pounds lighter than every other guy there and see how you feel within a week. I like that. A free for all jail. Like very, a free for all. <laughs> very like common there's type no, of jail. But like it's yeah, just. Yeah, you know, you're, you're right. You know what I mean? Like because yeah. that's what that's what it is. Uh-huh. Right. Where it's like. Man. Yeah, it's it's good that you aren't like, you know, uh, you're not like it's interesting. Like v- very few men are forced in that situation. Yeah. You're not forced. You can kind of choose it. Right. Yeah. Like, you're not signing up for the fucking football team. No. Right? Like, I mean, maybe you are, <laughs> it, it, in, in which case you might 
like learn a thing or two being the lightest person on the football team. Yeah. Um, but yeah, something like the, the prison example is a great one because it's like you immediately understand how that would feel. Yeah. Like, you are the least physically capable person. And if somebody wants something from you. Yeah. You're fucked. Yeah. Like it's. <laughs> you're fucked. Yeah. And like that's like some, unfortunately, women learn that the hard way. And that's a very like that's why like men f like I, I well, really that's... think boxing and other things like that are super important for men because y you you learn that your body has limitations. Mm -hmm. And when you fight a guy that's way bigger than you, you learn really quickly, like, okay, if this guy wanted to yeah. fucking kill me, he could. Yeah. And it makes, it it's becomes very tangible. Yeah. Because the discussion on whether I can defeat a coyote or a wolf, <laughs> wolf. or not yeah, defeat is wolf. like, I, I thought you were a bit crazy on it until mm -hmm. you gave me some of these examples mm -hmm. of like, you don't know what it's like until it's taken from you. Yes. Like you don't know what it's like until, you know, you're the you the life is leaving your eyes. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, yeah, all of a sudden like you can't fight a fucking wolf and yeah. it's very fun to theorize it. Yeah. Um but, but when you truly have like, no control and it and it feels bad. Like yeah. I started to understand like why it would feel bad. Yeah. To hear your partner even <laughs> saying some of that stupid <laughs> shit, because it is like it's it you're, it's like it's like oh good for you like you you're talking about like the, the size of animal that you can be like let's cool <laughs> I wish I lived in that reality yeah. you know where that was like a fun little hobby. It's like if you wrestled with I don't know who's like Gabe, mm -hmm. right? And Gabe wanted By to By the way, not... guys, Gabe is my hairstylist and so... he's a fuck. He, I don't know if he just boxes, but he, he's a big guy who knows how to punch. He's a big guy who way. knows how to fight. He's like 240 yeah. pounds, something like that. He's big. Um, but if you were to like wrestle with somebody at that size and they didn't want you to get up, <laughs> yeah. you're not getting up. Yeah. And that's like a hard thing to like mm -hmm. grapple with and women most women are very aware of that reality of like if this person wanted me to not leave this elevator mm -hmm. i'm not leaving this yeah. elevator and that's like a hard you can like look at most men and and be like okay if i need to right like um, well, Jeffrey Dahmer. I was gonna say a, a good example of that, though. Yeah. Uh, you can you can go after this. Yeah. I have not walked around my whole life thinking that I am like physically capable of like defeating the average man in combat. Combat. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Um, but mm -hmm. I did live my whole life knowing that men don't want anything to do with me, yeah. and that is seen. Like in in every fucking aspect of life. Yeah. I like uh, maybe a, ch a chatty guy yeah. on occasion. I don't fucking know. Even yeah. that's kind of like uncommon, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's so, just not something you have to think about. Yeah. Ever. It's like it's almost just like understood. Like yeah, we don't want to fucking talk to each other. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. Yeah. That's it. Because I was gonna say like Jeffrey Dahmer's biggest mis like mistake. I would yeah. say like the best thing that ever happened was him trying to go after a full-grown man. Right. Who ended up punching mm -hmm. him in the head and escaping. Yeah. Right. He had, like, gone after, like, very specific targets up until that point. So, like, it's, it's like, there's a lot of men out there that I think, like, like, I would, man, if I had testosterone, I would be... It would be over for you, man. I would be jacked, <laughs> and I would be, like... I there's no way I'd be the most jacked five foot six man you'd ever met in your life. Okay, I believe that. Because like Ooh. I would want you know like some men are like I need to have all the guns listen, in the world. No, no, no. You listen to me. I would be like I need to have every single inch of bicep that I possibly can. If I had the amount of estrogen that women have, yeah. I'd have the fattest tits you'd ever <laughs> see in your life. What would that benefit you for? Freaking producing. <laughs> producing milk. Would you have kids if you were a woman? Uh, no, I mean, no. I mean, 
No. No, you wouldn't, would you? I, I, I don't think that would change anything. I mean, no, I just don't know what that that female drive, that motherly drive looks like. like I don't think it... Am I going to have... Like, would I have that if I had a bit more estrogen? Like, I need to fucking... No, because I don't have it. Well, they, okay. Fair I don't, enough. I think it's a condition... Yeah, then I don't think I'd have it. But, like, if you, let's say, hypothetically, mm-hmm. you did want to have kids pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Like, I won't say, like, you, you felt like you were going to die without them, okay. but you thought your life would be more complete, and you were a woman. Uh, okay. Would you have kids with the, like, what happens to your body and the risk of, like, death and stuff? Ooh, no. You wouldn't have kids? No. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. And I think if men are being honest, mm. because we don't have to think about it at all, mm-hmm. uh, and the, the all we have to do is pretty fucking easy, mm-hmm. like, I think a lot of guys would say the same thing. Yeah. You know, if you're being honest. Yeah. Because that's a lot of shit to go through. That's why, like... I worry about... Yeah, I know. Dropping big deuces. Oh. Like, how <laughs> okay, much never my mind. butthole's going to I thought you were going to say... I thought you were going to say I'm worried about you. Oh. And I was like, that's so sweet that you're worried about me if I go through pregnancy. With well, I'm trying to bring it back to, like a, like, a selfish, like, how... Okay. Analogies so, are important yeah. to educate, right? No, yeah, that's fair. Like, if I could get scared, <laughs> like, oh, fuck. Like, it's not coming out. You can rip your ass. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Do I need to get up in there with some pliers or something? <laughs> like, you know. I literally, I can't. That that was the funniest rug pull joke, unintentional rug pull joke that has ever happened to me. Yeah. Was you saying that. Oh, I yeah. really thought you were, because the way genuine. you looked at me, you were like, I even worry about, and you like nodded at me. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, that's so that. sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I think that, though, is why men who are, like, way too excited to have kids and, like, way too pushing to have kids with their partners, why it bothers me so much. Yeah. Because I, I think, okay, how about this? Men need to be willing to... Mm-hmm. Uh, Take a big shit. No, no. I was going to have to say, like, have something removed. Oh, like a gallbladder. Yeah. A- Wait, what would... I'm trying to think what what could be a uh, like a legitimate thing to like take from men in that case, but it wouldn't be know. useful to society. It would always just be like a yeah. uh, it's seen as like a waste of money and time. Take their like, even if you did take a nut. Here's a crazy them. statistic: men after having kids usually get like raises or are more likely to make more money at their work. Women no matter what profession they have, no matter how good they are, no matter how fast they come back, no matter how, less. whether they're like the primary caretaker of the child or not, less. So interesting. When I think about it, that makes sense to me because I'm like, the the worst part of my brain says like, you're definitely doing less work. That's so fucked. You're definitely doing less work if you got kids. But like for men, it's not viewed that way. No, though. because you don't think of the men as doing any work. That's so fucked. You you actually uh, do the opposite, and you say, "Oh, you poor thing. Yeah, you poor little baby man. You need more money to take care of the kids because you breadwinner." Yeah, I guess that is true. Yeah, it's just like perfectly reflects what you know. Our like old society. Yeah, of, like things you know. is happening. But there's like a lot of women who like are doctors and shit that actually have to think mm. about that reality. As a yeah, lawyers. Yeah, that's rough. So. Um, Okay, I think we should start to wrap this bad mama jama, oh. lama jama thing up. Okay, I don't think uh, we're having kids. Do you think we're having kids? Uh, if life gets easier and we feel like there is more to life, then mm. yes, we mm. will have kids. That sounded I super. <laughs> if we find out there's more to life, what's... yeah. Wait, like more to life to be had if we have kids. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> what did it sound like? It just a little sounded a little dark. Dark. Yeah. Like what? Mm. Like maybe no. we're not going to continue playing the game. Oh, okay. No, life. no, no, no. <laughs> no, just like because there's a slight curiosity. Mm-hmm. 
I think the seed has been planted to some degree. Mm. Maybe not. Maybe the seed hasn't been planted. But, like, I can see how... Like, how oh, I'll, put, I'll put it this way. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that have happened in my life, initially, I thought were the that if, if these things did happen, mm -hmm. it would be the worst thing ever mm -hmm. or very bad. But in reality, they've been, like, nothing. Nothing or great, mm -hmm. you know, like getting married. Mm -hmm. I, I think I always had an assumption that, like, oh, that that's going to mean something changes. Mm -hmm. For us, it didn't really mean anything changed no. other than my last name. Yeah. Uh, which is, you know, filling a couple documents out. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I think we we will if we if we want to shake things up a little bit. Stir the pot. Shake, shake it up, have some kids. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so thank you for watching this episode of the... <gasps> then Dane will really be Uncle Dane. We're not related to Uncle Dane, babe. No, but fr <laughs> but friends, really good friends, become uncles. True, true. Uncle That's Dane. Valid. And I always thought that that should be the case. It should just be like the friends yeah. become the aunts and uncles because yeah. that's like like I don't know. Why should you get a title just being my damn brother or yeah, sister? That's what I'm saying. You but ain't yeah. doing shit, Uncle Dane. Yeah. Okay. That, I'm sorry. I'll let you wrap. Uh, up. Yeah, I guess that is going to be it for this first podcast. Hopefully, uh, it's enjoyed, and we come back here next week uh, or after Australia. I don't know when we're going to be doing the next one, yeah. but uh, we'll that see will, how this goes. Yeah, that will be it. Thank you. Bye, bye, hasta la vista. Say it. Say, hasta la vista. Hasta la vista. But say it like this in an accent. Hasta la vista. Hasta la vista. But look at that camera. Hasta, hasta la vista. vista. Perfect. That was good. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Dane. Thank you, Uncle Dane. Shut up. <laughs> Shut the hell up. Shut your bitch ass up. <laughs>